Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today we're making a six foot, six inch tall Bigfoot. That's right, we're cutting something way bigger than we have any business cutting. I'm gonna show you how I get it done. Don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now. Hey guys, it's Alex and Rhiannon and today we're cutting a six and a half foot tall Bigfoot out of this. Tall guy. Can you see the whole thing? No. This is an eight foot tall by four foot wide piece of plywood and we need to cut a Yeti out of it as big as humanly possible. We've already done some of the artwork which we're gonna get to in a minute but before we continue on down the main path we have to actually cut this into manageable pieces. We're cutting it on the mirror nine today and this bed is only three feet wide by two feet tall so no part of this at all is gonna fit inside the mirror nine. So we have to cut it down like the good old fashioned way. Let's do that really quick. All right guys, now that we've got the wood chalked out into our individual sections here, you can see these are three feet by two feet. And then we'll have some leftover pieces. Those are actually gonna be really important when we go to cut the file. But before we continue on here, let's go talk about how we're gonna actually prep the artwork for this layout first. We're going to get started right away with the artwork and Inkscape, and the first thing we need to pay attention to is our page size. We only have so much space, and we need to make sure we're working within the confines of the laser and the material. To get started, we're going to go to File and Document Properties. This is where we can adjust the size of our page in Inkscape, which will help us keep track of things. In particular, right now, we're concerned with our material size. We want to make sure parts are scaled correctly so we aren't using more material than we actually have. Make sure you're working in a familiar, real-world measurement. Entering the size of the material in pixels isn't going to be useful for this project. For now, we'll choose inches. Since I'm bad at math, we're going to do a few quick calculations here to get our material dimensions in inches from feet, and then we can input those numbers into the height and width dimensions of the page. Now we have the page representing our eight foot by four foot piece of ply, which we can use going forward to check our planned cuts against the total amount of material we actually have. It will be extremely useful going forward. After making sure that the Inkscape interface is set to the same unit type as the page, we can begin with a rectangle which will represent our cut bed and cut of material. Our cut bed on the Mira 9 is 36 inches by 24 inches, so we'll input those values in the shape size section here. Next, we're going to build a quick reference for the size of our cut bed. This is equally important because we have to be sure of how many full cut beds we can design and cut out of our sheet material. Since we're working with even numbers here, it should give us about four full pieces, so I'm not super worried about it. We'll also need this reference to make sure the pieces of the Bigfoot we plan to cut fit inside the sheet for any given job. If you're confused, don't worry, it'll make more sense as we get along. Let's grab our Bigfoot art and bring it into Inkscape so we can get a look at what we're actually trying to accomplish here. He's a bit small, so let's scale him up. A key thing here is that we could likely make him bigger than he would be as a single cut, which is a benefit of having to do this in pieces. That said, we can't use every inch of this material because our bed size is a good bit slimmer than the material itself. We're just going to have to start cutting it up and see what we get. If we have a lot of leftover space, we could try to make him a bit bigger, but for now, we'll start as if we're doing it as a single cut, which at the very least signals we'll be using a solid chunk of the material available. I'm going to remove the fill from the cut bed box and set the stroke to hairline so we can see and cut with it easily. Having a stroke on will interfere with the alignment process visually, so I recommend you remove any stroke before continuing. From here, we can really start to plan our cuts. Just by moving around the cut bed box, you can get a solid idea of what's going to be required to get this whole guy done. 
right off the bat it's looking like maybe five cuts will be required again the only way to be sure is to do so we'll duplicate our cut bed box with Control d and start shifting things around to get a basic layout down to make sure our cuts are perfectly aligned with one another, we're going to use a special alignment tool to bring outside edges of independent objects together. It looks like this, and it's essential when planning this. Misaligned cuts will break, delete, or otherwise obscure pieces of our shapes in ways we haven't planned for, which is going to cause chaos down the road. Make sure to start with a solid cut base like we are with the head of the Bigfoot, then align all of your cuts to that base or something aligned to that base to make sure nothing slips through the cracks. Our Bigfoot is still a raster, so we need to run a quick trace. Cutting this guy up as a raster is going to be nearly impossible to do, so we really need a vector before moving ahead. Once that's done, we can get rid of the raster. We don't need it anymore. Double clicking on the vector will show the node editor, which is going to be important as we start cutting things. We want to make sure that the lines are clean and straight where we break the Bigfoot apart so that the laser cuts along a predictable path. We've talked about it enough though. Let's break this vector down into pieces the mirror can handle. First, we're going to select everything, the vector to be broken up and all of our cut guides. Then we're going to head to path in the menu bar and select fracture. This operation is incredibly useful. It'll break every single group of the line segments into individual shapes. There we go. Now, we do want to pay attention to the negative space from our cut guides, which need to be deleted before import. It doesn't look like much has happened here, but if we start to pull segments of the original shape away, you can see we're left with the pieces we need to get the job done, as well as some we don't, including this sneaky one appearing in the corner of the legs. Let's make sure we delete that too. We're looking really good now. If we cut things correctly, we should be able to use the outside align to put the Bigfoot back together without any gaps or missing pieces. During this process, you can see we didn't get the best fracture on the right leg, and there's a gap here on the inside of the leg. There's also this awkward spot up here on the arm, and an overhang here on the left arm. You could undo everything you've done up to this point, move your cut guides around to try to find better spots and refracture it, but that's going to take way longer than simply opening the node editor and fixing the bad spots. Double click on a segment to open the node editor. Double click again to add a node. Click any node to select it and drag it around. Select one of these circular node modifiers to add some curve to the line segment. With these basic tools, we can very quickly edit out defects in our cut path and make sure everything looks good when we cut it all out. Select a node with the mouse and hit the delete key on the keyboard to remove it. You can remove nodes in problem areas to easily flatten out paths that curve in ways you don't want. Here we can completely remove this gap just by deleting the nodes the gap is composed of. If we circle back around to the weird overhanging bit on the leg, this is easily solvable with one click of the mouse and one stroke of the delete key. If we zoom out now to realign our Bigfoot, note it doesn't collapse all the way down. This is because we created a shape that occupies space lower than the cut line, and so the outside align is aligning to that new lower boundary instead of the cut line we originally fractured the vector on. No worries, this is an easy fix. We'll double click again to enter the node editor and pull that feature back up towards the body to realign the bounding box with the fracture line. Once that's done, the shape collapses perfectly into alignment again. We did create some weirdness here with the fracture line due to modifying the body, so let's make sure that that node is in its appropriate place right where the two shapes should connect after cutting. If the curves above it still don't look right, we can easily edit or add nodes above the one we just relocated to clean things up. That looks much better now, and we have the Bigfoot cut into five clean shapes. As a final check, we can make sure each piece still fits inside our cut bed by creating a new guide at 36 by 24 inches. We can start rotating the pieces as needed to make sure everything fits the way it should. Once we're satisfied, we can set the piece aside and move through the rest of them. If a piece doesn't fit, we can move it to the other side to address that after we're done. You can keep fracturing pieces to get things to fit better. Just remember the more cuts you make, the more pieces you'll end up having. The real goal is to have as few pieces as possible as a result of the fracture while still having everything fit in the cut bed. It's probably a good idea to keep an eye on how things are fitting together as you add more fractures so there aren't any surprise missing pieces when you get to the cut. 
Once we have things about where we want them, it's time to confirm our planned cuts against our available material. Let's create another cut bed guide and see how we're doing. We can fit things into as many cut bed sized pieces as we want, but at the end of the day, there's only so much material to go around. One way or another, we need to make sure we can still get everything on the bed. With a quick test, we can see we can cut our four full cut beds out of this material, but we know we have at least five full cut beds worth of cuts. We're going to have to get a little creative to get this all done in one shot. We cannot resize any individual piece at this point because resizing one will stop it from matching the rest. We could take the whole thing down in size, but where's the fun in that? Instead, let's see which pieces fit best inside our designated cut areas and then see if we can make any additional fractures that will allow us to use the rest of the negative space to make additional cuts on the leftover material. An easy win is to fracture the feet from the legs, which will give us two tidy pieces we can easily cut from the scrap. We can also cut the arm from the shoulder here to give us another easy scrap cut. For some fractures, like this elbow piece, you'll want to zoom in closely before applying the boolean to make sure you've got a nice alignment and aren't creating any weird shapes. After some tinkering, here's the final layout for the Bigfoot cut, which will stand at just over 6 feet and 6 inches tall. Once you're satisfied with how you've chopped up your vector, we can wrap it up with a quick save as an SVG file and bring it into Lightburn. I tried to keep this part of the video brief as a lot of this is circumstantial, but hopefully you've learned enough about the applicable tools to apply this to your own situation. If you need to cut something with the grain all facing the same way, or using only one side of the material, this process can be a bit more tedious and require substantially more material, but since this cutout is being used as a stencil, those constraints don't really apply here, so this is pretty much the best case scenario for an oversized cut. Alright, that's enough on the computer, let's go get our hands on the woodcuts we've prepared and get this big guy lasered. Okay guys, now like we have in the artwork, we have our four small sections and our four larger sections and they should be a perfect fit for our bed. They're not perfect cuts, but they'll be good enough for what we need to do with them and those slide right in. Now we can go ahead and get cutting. What's Alex doing? Your mom. Oh, oh got him again. Shit. So this project is actually for our neighbors at the paint shop next door and they have a giant garage door that is closed at the moment and I think I want to build the Yeti on the wall so that the next time they come into the shop it's just waiting for them. I keep saying Yeti, I think it's a Bigfoot. Yeah, it looks like a Bigfoot. Um, so we're gonna grab some masking tape and just tape it up onto their wall so that when they come in next, they'll be there waiting for them. guy who asked for this is using it as a stencil so he's actually only tracing these lines out onto a larger sheet of wood that he's gonna cut by hand 
So it doesn't really matter that the pieces are all mixed matched as far as grain and stuff goes, because I know that's the first thing a few of you guys are going to talk about. But uh, yeah, this gets the job done. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I really appreciate you coming by. I hope you got some value out of it. We learned some great skills in Inkscape and applied them in Lightburn. This was a really cool project. Special thanks to Rhiannon for helping me out. Don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload an episode. Hopefully the uh, painters like coming back to a Bigfoot. See you in the next one.